In recent times, SpaceX has reignited inspiration in fans with this image and this one too. Yeah, a great place to take great selfies, right? But wait, I bet this is not the most interesting tidbit. In fact, all of that is just a signal for an upcoming masterpiece. Guess what? I hope you guessed it right. It is an extremely majestic super factory with enough capacity to manufacture Starship rockets every day. Of course, the image of an old tins and the build site is just a thing of the past. And more importantly, it is just about to go into operation. Stay tuned in today's episode for the latest updates on its progress and more. Building the Giga Factory is part of the plan to turn Starbase South Texas into a gateway to Mars, as said by Kathy Luteris as the Space Post launch conference in December last year. Her presentation shared that SpaceX is rapidly expanding its facilities in Boca, China, Texas, and will soon build a rocket manufacturing factory called Star Factory. Anybody that's been at Starbase, they understand we are in the middle of a major construction activity. I mean, we have a million square foot factory coming online and being built right now. We have additional homes being built in the village that we have coming online, she said. In the short term, the construction of a large factory will be very useful in preparations for Starship's multiple flights this year. We're actually right now working on updating the data and submitting for our Flight 3 and Flight 4 applications. Because as you guys have probably heard in the news, that we tend to get the rockets ready. And then we're sometimes are waiting a little bit while we're going through and getting our eyes dotted. And the teaser crossed on the licensing application she added. In the long term, this facility will be used to serve the mass production of 100 to 300 Starships upper stages per year towards Mars colonization in three decades. Elon Musk also confirmed this. To achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need the ship production to be about 100 a year, but ideally raising to 300 a year. The SpaceX president Gwen Shotwell previously set an ambitious goal of building one rocket every day. Why can't we build a rocket every day? That's what we're focusing on with Starship. It's attacking every part of the production process to be able to build lots of these machines. Currently, SpaceX Star Factory is expanding rapidly. The Starbase site used to be just a bunch of giant Mark U tents on a concrete pad. There, they had giant warehouses building including Low Bay, High Bay, and Mega Bay. The Low Bay was demolished on May 28, 2023. And now, only the high bay and two mega bays where the rockets are stacked. The tents are now gone, and the star factory building to replace the tents are nearly completed, or at least the walls are nearly completed. The interiors may take longer. It means that the first phase of the process is almost done. SpaceX initiated the construction of phase one of the star factory alongside manufacturing tent three at the beginning of 2022. Their initial work was to demolish old structures one by one to make space for Star Factory, followed by the cleaning process, pouring concrete, building the frame, and finally installing the walls and roof. Phase two is to expand all the way from the inside edge of the production area to the main road to form the final square shape. With its expansion, the new factory is estimated to cover an expressive area of up to 60,000 square meters, which is four to five times the total area of the previous 10 structures. In terms of height, it's likely to be designed to be equivalent to the height of the tents, and there will be a taller building dedicated to manufacturing and researching higher components. Thus, SpaceX could feasibly expand more stacks by a ring or two, which would reduce the number of sections and stocking operations as well as needed to assemble a ship or booster. With a huge area, the building would have almost two and a half times as much covered floor space as Starbase 3 tents. Periodically, it'll be used to assemble the ring in those parts. That is going to make the manufacturing process much easier by having a united production floor instead of three separate tents. Previously, each tent would be responsible for producing a certain part of the Starship. Tent 1, which is closest to State Highway 4 and is used for installing the Raptor engines on vehicles currently in production. Tent 2 is where the rings are fabricated and where segments and domes are initially assembled. To the north side of the tent, there are sleeving jacks where the domes and the ring segments are joined to create a seal. 
Due to its small size, assembling the ring segments on top of the domes is often done outdoors. Subsequently, each section is prepared for its specific role with a series of cutouts, plumbing systems, and reinforcement materials. Tent 3 is the nose cone tent, where the tops of starships are created and sometimes style. These tents have the same disadvantage, which is an arc-shaped structure, so SpaceX cannot optimize the working space and this structure makes it difficult to accommodate large parts. Such large parts will often be taken outside the tent, causing them to be affected by the weather. But the most important factor will still be production technology. The current production process still has many manual steps like welding or bending, so the speed is quite slow. Discussing the Star Factory's role in Starship production, some suggest that one of the major things that SpaceX has to invent in is a clean room type of setup for the continued production of the Starships and boosters, but not as critical. The manufacturing of Starship's second virgin or even higher virgins involves the carrying of humans, and this needs to be more rigidly controlled against contamination of the materials used and the welds produced so that the builds are of a uniform design. So, enclosed assembly line practices using precision jigs for input to output of parts will mean that chip A is the same as Y in terms of strength and safety. In addition, a few months ago, the media also recorded images of metal structures being installed in both sides of the entrance to Mega Bay. It indicates that the Mega Bay could be fitted with tracks for giant sliding doors to close off the interior. It is not exactly a clean room, but it is a step in the right direction. It would be a fairly substantial purge of all the dusty air inside to be classified as a clean room. Some added that clean rooms are controlled environments of various grades. The Mega Bay might be class 10,000, which means 10,000 dust particles per cubic meter of air, which is not super clean, but not actually dusty. An IC production fab might be class 1, which is far above the needs of spacecraft. For satellites, they are built in class 100 clean rooms. Another opinion is that it's possible that they can get the mega base clean enough just by having the air conditioning system bump air into the building to keep positive pressure, which means that the dusty air outside does not get in, a door isn't mandatory to make it clean enough, but there are many definitions of clean enough, so no way for us to know. By building a large factory with a modern production system, we are confident that just one or two years later, we can witness hundreds or even thousands of starships standing at Starbase waiting for their turn to take off and head towards Mars. It is similar to how Musk turned his dream into reality with the Tesla electric car. He faced skepticism when aiming for a million cars a year with Gigafactory. But Tesla's success literally silenced many doubters. It is absolutely amazing to see our future is becoming more positive every day. And great people like Musk are truly the creators of that future. And that is just about a wrap for today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell so you never miss out on any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content almost every single day. Thank you and we look forward to see you in the next time. See you again.